the sustenance, the close sustenance of the human body. In the human life, entirely depends on the system that runs nature. The entirely depends on the systems that are working for the human life and for the life of every living thing. And if that system is damaged, well, the human being will perish because we entirely depend on these things. We depend on water, we depend on air, we depend on food, we depend on the space, we depend on uh, how the environment is sound, with the right temperature, with the right weather, with the right uh, conditions for us to survive. And that's what the planet does for us, create the right conditions so we will be in a harmonious environment. And so we, if we don't have that, and so there, the, there's not going to be peace, and there's not going to be uh, any reason to live in an in a enjoyable life. Life will be crazy as it's going that way pretty quickly, and life will be very uh, uh, confusing for most of humans, and it will be no longer life but just surviving at all costs, which has become madness and insanity. Hello everyone, welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. Very grateful to be on site at the Somatic Sanctuary in Ojai in California. We are now gonna be talking about ancient wisdom. We have Mama Ujuan joining us on the show, hello. Hello. Thank you, you so much Thank for, you for having me here, thank you. We're very, very grateful to have you. I was very fortunate to be introduced to you teaching the ancient wisdom about last month and since then i've been very um, interested in continuing to learn and embody this wisdom and we came down here for the workshop that you had a two-day workshop at the beautiful somatic sanctuary and it was very powerful again and i'm very grateful that you were um, willing to sit down with us and I would like to give some background to those that don't know. Mama Nui Juan is a gifted native Andean maestro from Colombia, a master in bringing the ancestral wisdom to all of America and the world. He is a vibrational healer, holistic educator, yogi, and shaman of the light. He holds the unique distinction of being the only mama born outside of Sierra Nevada of Santa Marta, Colombia, authentically ordained by the highest ranking Kogi, Mama Jacinto, who recognized and tested him over a 15 year period and was surprised to see how exceptionally accurate Mama Nui Juan was in his way of working with Aluna, the spirit of the mother. Mama has dedicated his entire life to spiritual training and the work needed to help transform people from all walks of life to recover humans' righteous functioning as part of nature on earth. He has also been doing silent service across the USA to reharmonize the forces and spirits of nature here in California and around the entire country for 25 years. And you can find the links in the bio below to Koginka Sewaluna Foundation.org as well as the Facebook page Koginka Sewaluna. Mama, let's start things off by asking you what is this ancient wisdom that you are teaching? The ancient wisdom of what we call the original wisdom of the mother. The mother refers to the power that has manifest everything into creation from the spiritual dimension to materiality. And so the original living wisdom of the mother is that that originally was passed to the first original ancestors, the first spirits, sons and daughters, of the mother. And with that, the mother has established from the very, very beginning, from millennia, right from the very beginning of the creation, has passed this ancestral wisdom that is all about how to behave, how to function, how to get along with each other as a spirit, and how to be able to co-create and maintain the reality in which is we would like to live, and essentially how to get along with the environment that sustain us, especially in this dimension and the human planet, how we can really function with nature, which is extraordinary basic and extraordinary essential. It's something that unfortunately is forgotten. The wisdom that we're talking about is the wisdom for the whole humanity is universal. 
is the origin of functioning, is the origin of getting along, is the origin of holding harmony, balance, integrity, and is the uh, original wisdom that really is critical for maintaining space and especially to preserve this planet. Unfortunately, that wisdom there is no wisdom only for the indigenous, aboriginous people of the world. No only a wisdom for the Kogis of our my ancestors, the Chipchas, or for the ancestors of the Sierra Nevada, the Kogis, and others. That original wisdom, the original wisdom of the earth, is for the entire humanity. We are only some of the groups that preserve it and we are only some of the ones that are still practicing and applying it. But it's not that this original wisdom is strange, in the great sense of the expression, for the entire humanity. When you see Native American uh, people, Americans or Native Africans or Native from any part of the world, when we look at them, even if it's a slight difference in a little bit of uh, controversial stuff, they essentially doing the same. And when that wisdom is lost, which is the wisdom for the entire humanity to behave in a beautiful dimension and planning like this, when that is forgotten and undermined and neglected, we create what we have right now, a complete mess. So this wisdom is what we are here bringing and telling the whole world, especially this is the mission that my mentor, the great mama, Jacinto put me to do, and then we pioneered 15 years ago with him and bringing that to the world because it was so critical and it's so critical. The, the human being recovered the original wisdom of the earth to be able to function with the, in, in this environment and consciously responsible for the planet. One of the best ways I think I've learned from you about understanding this is what sustains us. It is the planet that we live on that sustains us. It is nature that sustains us. Every breath we take, every drink of water that we have, every bite of food that we have comes from this planet. And when we become disconnected from that, we see so many of the issues that have arisen in our world. And I think that's a beautiful aspect of this of this ancient wisdom and like you indicated it's ancient wisdom from all of the indigenous tribes are pointing at the same thing that we have in this case lost i want to ask you about the that embodying that uh that remembering of what sustains us of this ancient wisdom that is the conscious living and functioning yeah the the basis of the original wisdom is very actually very self-evident and extraordinary practical and functional and the best the best extraordinary proof of the original wisdom is just the functioning of the body if you see the body it has many organs many systems many intelligent extraordinary special functions the body functions in a very cohesive, coordinated, harmonious way. Even though every organ can be doing a number of functions, they are developed for the entire uh, benefit of the whole system, the whole organized system. The body shows the how is to work in unity, in harmony, and in balance. So, if the organism that is functioning in unity, cohesiveness, and balance, then nature will come to them the same way. Well, nature is what? Nature is life force. People think that nature is uh, trees and rivers and all. Those are only the material manifestation of the workings of nature. But nature is life force. Life force is a conglomerated uh, group of forces coming from the cosmos and so forth and so forth. So the sustenance, the close sustenance of the human body in the human life entirely depends on the system that runs nature. The entirely depends on the systems that are working for the human life and for the life of every living thing. And if that system is damaged, well, the human being will perish. 
because we entirely depend on these things. We depend on water, we depend on air, we depend on food, we depend on the space, we depend on uh, how the environment is sound, with the right temperature, with the right weather, with the right um, uh, conditions for us to survive. And that's what the planet does for us, create the right conditions so we will be in a harmonious environment. And so we, if we don't have that, and so there, the, there's not going to be peace, and there's not going to be uh, any reason to live in an in a enjoyable life. Life will be crazy as it's going that way pretty quickly, and life will be very uh, uh, confusing for most of humans, and it will be no longer life but just surviving at all costs, which has become madness and insanity. If we destroy the environment in which we live, which is lack of consciousness and, and conscious uh, responsible behavior, so then we are all compromising the most essential elements of the human being. And that's what this original wisdom says. If you don't preserve harmony, balance, order, peace, and sound environment, the human being will be cr uh, crazy. And that entirely depends on nature. We don't do that work. Give the example of the body and how beautiful of a cohesive system that is. And if there is an organ failure that happens, well, the body is, is injured in that process. And that is, in a sense, what is uh, part of the systems, these functioning systems on the planet are experiencing um, these injuries that the humans are not functioning cohesively with nature with the system that sustains them and now you're indicating um, to us that it's um, it's become like an allergic reaction of the planet and that the amount of people that are um, living in a non-harmonious way with nature is, is is so many that we now how how do we um, deal with the allergic reaction that the planet is is giving us right now. We, instead of to be part of the harmony and, and part of the uh, very harmonious functioning of nature, nature has given us the opportunity to embody a spirit. Our bodies are coming from the workings of nature in a very in an extraordinary, amazing way. The body itself is a piece of art. And that is the original wisdom of millennium, the original wisdom of the earth and the original wisdom of the human race is right there in the body. Look at it. And you will care for that body. You will do whatever to preserve your life. If somebody comes to mess with your body and touch it and even just do a little pinch or something, you will react and you will act defensively. What about if we do the same with the system that have provide our bodies? And that's exactly what we should do, protect the environment, the mother of our own lives and bodies, the provider of sustenance, we should protect it, and we should do what is right. In our wisdom, the wisdom of the ancestral land of Colombia, it is all about how to function, how to get along with the system that sustains us. The best relationship of the human spirit should be with nature to begin with. Otherwise, he cannot, he cannot get along with superior dimensions or superior levels of consciousness of celestial realms or anything like that. We are here to master the experience in a beautiful environment that was designed for us to master consciousness, to master wisdom. But we are doing the opposite. And in, in we, to make, make matters worse, we are basically attacking our own mother, destroying it. The damages that we are causing to this planet are completely out of proportions, are extraordinarily unthinkable, unconceivable. The damages that we are causing to this planet cannot be repaired probably in, in millions of years. What nature took in time and process and improvement for thousands and thousands of years, we are destroying it in a couple hundred years. And if we don't change our ways, we all ended up in a very catastrophic end. And I'm not alarming anybody, but 
This is the message. It's coming to the point that many people know already that we are all, already had passed the tipping point, and which is probably there is no way back to recover, to repair. But we still can stop becoming enemies of nature, stabbing and destroying our own mother, the mother and our own life, the system that sustains and provides for us. This is, a, this is exactly for us what is insanity, you know? And so this is the allergic reaction. When the human being becomes like a pest, that is like a your house. If you see some box around, some insects, as I explained before, well, you're cool with it. So, you know, especially if you are pro-life, you know, kind of a fake, you, say, you know, yeah, life, you know, and you protect the, the ant that is around there. Two ants, yeah, you say, well, probably it's the father and the son. And then you say the whole legion of ants comes to you, and then one night the ants are at your bed, so you say, no, I had to start spraying. And so nature can become very allergic and reactive to us, which is the case, because we are intruding, invading, destroying the organs of functioning and recovery and the organs of balance of the earth just to make profits, which is okay, you know, but there is, there is a level that it should be intelligent and not blind to make profits and to make business. But to the point that people should respect and do not cross the land or in the line where we already causing extraordinary damage that is practically beyond repair. We should not cross that line. And my message here is also for the ones who are making profits and destroying nature, I'm not gonna blame anybody because I can point fingers to anybody, but remember that probably they also had children and their new generations, and money doesn't guarantee the good future of anybody. What guarantees the future of every single human being in here, in a lower status, in a high class, is harmony, balance, and is good environment that is coming from nature. So I really, I will really ask to these people, whoever is that, the, please, we beg you to reinvest the money that you had taken from nature to repair it. Please do that. Please. please. And you're not going to do it because of your own set of the beliefs and, you know, system of beliefs or your convictions and everything, but I'm telling people that still, and I'm speaking to the people who still can hold a level of consciousness. This is not about in what side you are, if you are in the right side, in the low side, in the higher side, in the high class. No, it's about the whole humanity that let's reinvest and return to nature. Otherwise, you will see what happens. And it's happening right now. It's not only what people is doing in manipulating nature. That's only another consequence of the same same disaster. The disaster of the human race is one. Eight billion people that is dysfunctional. Doesn't know how to get along with nature, including the ingenious heads and the ingenious geniuses of the planet with very few exceptions. The billions of years of evolution that it took for the planet to be able to sustain us, and then in just a couple hundred years, the ways that in seems uh, the irre uh, irreparable damages that have been caused um, need to be healed. And like you requested for those that have made profit off of, of the planet and other humans to please reinvest back into the nature that sustains us to guarantee a better future for us all. And also, I want to see what, you, what your thoughts are here. You, um, every child being born in full connection um, with the full potential to be connected to, to nature, to spirit, and then uh, there is a lot of deceptions and manipulations that can uh, 
for the fragmentation of the spirit and then will you please teach us about that process yeah once people is caught in an artificial system that is actually is is deceptive because it's artificial and it's also deceptive because it doesn't get along with nature if the system would get along with nature it will be not that deceptive and it will not be that dysfunctional it's that simple but people has become so so desensitized and so unsensitive and so unconscious that the system of artificial malfunctioning is completely predominant and the human race is just moving in a system that it doesn't have any any level of connection and, and any level of functioning with nature and so children who is born in the same system unless somebody come and bring the consciousness because it's not to remove children from dysfunctional system that's already something really uh, is it wrong view a wrong perspective is to bring children to come and get along with nature so they will be able the new generations by being educated in the in the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of functioning with the system that sustain us so they will probably are the force that will create the change but it depends of the educator who educates the educator and the functioning with nature who probably the ones who know the wisdom of the earth and the wisdom of the original wisdom of, of humanity that's exactly what we're doing so the question of deception is a system that is completely artificial that has no way to get along with nature it proves that in this system and look i'm not an activist i'm not a pro you know let's say uh, rebel or something that that's not what we do we're not here to politicize or spiritualize politics or politicize spirituality that's completely stupid for us we only follow wisdom and we tell people to say look if you if you don't stop behaving and building an artificial system we all will be destroyed as simple as that it has happened before it has completely this behavior of being smart and trying to outsmart nature with inventions with technology with science is 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 not the first time the great civilizations have completely been banished by the power of creation because they they just went too much little too far in their own you know curiosity and their own stupidity and they destroyed themselves we'll go in the same way in, in stupid things trying to destroy the system that, that, that actually sustain us and then trying to outsmart the system that is super intelligent and is also super super delicate they we don't know how to do that and, and we all now have the conviction that science and technology is going to repair the problems that we created in the first place. No, it's about the system of malfunctioning. If the system malfunction and it doesn't get along with the system that sustain us, so then that's the catastrophic event of the human being. So uh, the question of deception is, we, why we are so convinced, this is exactly the deception. We, why we are still so convinced that what we're doing is just fine just because we are barely sustaining a system of malfunctioning that well it's okay and somebody or some you know very very reduced group of people is benefiting uh, from that system that doesn't mean that the system is not dysfunctional the system in which is we're wrong is completely dysfunctional and it's, and it's going to collapse. Whatever is dysfunctional and it doesn't get along with nature, it will collapse. Simple as that. And, and sooner or later, it will collapse. Simple as that. And we don't want to prove that the system is right through a, a very uh, catastrophic event. The ultimate, the ultimate you know, doom day you know, a boom day, you know, like the ultimate, ultimate uh, apocalyptic event to prove, yeah, our system was wrong, bye-bye, everybody.
This is exactly the deceptive. The deception lies in the fact that we insist and insist that the way we operate for centuries, especially the last century in this life, that that's a system that functions and works just because, you know, probably for some work conveniently, but that's not guaranteed it will not collapse. So why we don't avoid the collapsing of a system that is dysfunctional and we correct it? It will be great for the ones who are on top and good for the ones that are low. And we will continue. The deception lies in the fact that we are still completely freaking attached to the system because it brings us profits and benefits and pleasures and, you know, power and all that. But it's a dysfunctional system, completely. It's no wise. That's why we are here to say return to the original wisdom and save what is dear for us is the planet the functioning of the planet and let's get along with it. It doesn't matter if everybody, everybody is different and want different things. Nature is nothing but a very, very big variety of things. And however nature, no matter how different is everything in nature, everything from the tiny to the mighty works in harmony. There are high mountains, there are low valleys and rivers and caves, and they function in harmony. Just as in this society, high people with high power, with high money, with high sophisticated knowledge and information. There are low people that doesn't know anything. You know, the tree has roots and it has flowers on top, and it's still in nature, everything functions cohesively, harmoniously. This system can keep the high-ranking people and the low-ranking people, but it still can function, getting along. That's the laws of nature, the low, the high, the lower should be the stronger, you know. The stronger part should be sustaining the weak part. Isn't that the way it's in nature? No, the opposite. The weak mm. and the deficient sustaining the stronger, it will collapse. Mm. A tree is not sustained by the leaves and by the flowers. Mm. A tree is sustained by deep, deep roots. This system pretends that the lower, that the weaker sustain the stronger. It will collapse. And it's, uh, it's civilization is not guaranteed. Uh, there have been collapses in the past, and the disconnection from nature um, and immature playing with godlike technologies um, is a recipe for disaster. And will you um, teach us about this relationship? I, I think this is a really great way of explaining it, that the older brother carries this ancient wisdom and that the younger brother is out in the world creating, engineering, building, toying around and making all these cool things. But when the younger brother is disconnected from the ancient wisdom and doing that, it's again a recipe for disaster. So will you teach us about that relationship? Com completely. The, the question of the younger brother and, and uh, uh, elder brothers and younger brothers it comes to a very simple thing. An elder brother is an obedient brother. It's somebody who stuck, uh, you know, stick to the rules, follow the principles, is rigorous, is reliable to the power, as the beginning has been. And the younger brother is a younger brother, but is a teenager. You know, like, you know, poisoned by ideas, poisoned by curiosity, by rebellion, by great, great creativity, is vivacious, is crazy, is very thrill, is outgoing, is, is just out there exploring the space, matter, uh, breaking down the atoms and getting crazy, building buildings that are just thousands of meters about so he can reach in his cars, the souls of God, and say, hello, look at how great I am, and all that. That's the younger brother. 
He has tremendous ingenuity, creativity, curiosity, invents all kind of things that are cool and sometimes are really ingenious. He has also his own wisdom to keep going his own life and everything. But he went crazy. So all the brothers, including us, the ones who hold wisdom, uh, that we were born in, in, in a country that honors and respects nat nature, most of us that are from my generation, we are completely conscious of nature. I was born as a campesino, as a country boy, and I learned from the land, from the way we live in, the nature is our mother. And I'm in this business of spirituality ever since I know myself. The real spirituality is first, you are the spirit. Nature is life force, that is the spirit. You should get along with honor, with dignity, with respect, like you respect your grandmother. But younger, younger brother put the great mother in the nursing homes. And he go about his entertainment and his inventions and discoveries. Doesn't hear the grandmother. The grandmother dies in the nursing home. That's exactly the disaster. Younger brother never learned the wisdom from the ancestors, from the elders, and that's why he goes about his craziness. And that craziness is expanding like a pest, like an infection, a pandemic, and that will bring us to destruction. That will destroy the younger brother, the entire planet. It has happened before, because the mentality of the younger brother, which is not in the mind, it's not in the brain, it's in his spirit. This is his curiosity, ingenuity, his, his uh, thrilling instinct to discover, to find out, to explain, is ancestral, it's in the spirit. And it has caused already many problems. It's not only in this planet, but in dimensions, and it's in, in different uh, times in the, in the planet and the cosmos. The younger brother has got, gotten crazy and has created all kinds of things. But also, I'm not saying there's only a younger brother, also the elder brothers have been thrilled, have been enticed and seduced by the younger brother attractions, and he also had fell. And you, that's why you see many of the elders also fell into the same trap. And you can see here in America and other places of the world, there's no longer real, real people holding the original living wisdom of the earth and humanity, and that's why people doesn't, it's completely forgotten, with very few exceptions. So what do you expect about that? Our race, if it doesn't have what you call the tutorial, very clear eye on top of the younger brother, he will get crazy, he will lose sense of proportions, he will go so mad and crazy that to the point that destroys everything. That's the reason why we come and tell what we say. And I've been doing this for 50 years, you know, and very intensely right now for the last 25 years. Look at what is happening. Fortunately, I, I got to tell that there is people who is getting it. There is people probably like you that are really, hey, this is serious. There's no longer a stop the game of madness, destruction, and uncontrollable, pleasing, stop it, because it's time. We're not going to have much time to repair. Right now, we can only stop and correct. We're, gonna, we're not going to correct anything because it's probably not going to be time for that. The, the conscious living that we can embody for the process of of healing, um, it's within us, not outside of us. And outside of us is where we sometimes find the deceptions, the the, the entertainment and the, and the and the drugs and so many of the things outside of us. But on the inside of us, um, how do we heal from the inside our connection to spirit and nature? And then how and then how do we go out into the ancestral lands for healing as well? And Go on that process. There, there, are, there are sacred spaces in nature, the spaces with the water system, with the rain system, with the reproduction of vitali and vitality and the reproduction of all the bigger in nature is repaired constantly. 
in the high mountains, in caves, in, in fountains of the underground currents of water, uh, in caves, in, in the very origin of rivers, and the snow peaks, and the ice lands, and all that, in the junction of rivers and oceans, and mainly in the oceans, nature is, is, is repairing and renovating, nature is recreating, nature is recycling and everything. If we mess with those sites and we damage those sites, it's like in your body, your liver is damaged, and then your kidneys are damaged, and then your stomach is damaged, and then your lungs are damaged, and then it becomes a systemic damage. What do you think it will happen? It will happen with that? Then the whole body will collapse, isn't it? Probably will less. So why we thinking that by causing all these damages to the system of the earth, and we're going to repair it? Is stupidly wrong. And so the human being has been dis being disintegrated because it's captivated by a system that is dysfunctional and probably it's not intended that way but it went that way for the lack of the other part the wisdom that it tell you when is enough when enough is enough when you need to stop to being foolish thinking that you're a genius the most foolish thing in life is that you believe that you're a genius when you are screwing yourself and screwing many others. That is called the worst level of stupidity. That's exactly what is happening in this planet. And then all of a sudden we're going to repair, we figure it out. Somebody else from another dimension and other aliens are going to tell you what to do. When it was simple from the beginning. Keep the harmony, keep the system recycling and functioning, do not damage the structure of the planet, energetic and, and, and material structure of the planet, don't damage it, so we will be able to receive the forces of the cosmos and you don't have to mess with anything else. And you can have a great life there, with money or without money, but still you can have a great life. No, but it's more than money, power, and more than power is domination and all that. Oh, really? Well, that, that way you have a hell. Because then you start destroying nature. And this is exactly the, 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 the cause of disintegration and the spirit that we were talking about. Since a human has completely forgotten, the first is a spirit and it's part of life force. Life force is a spirit. So we don't care about anything that we don't see. We only care about what we can see, but the unseen, the invisible, the supernatural, that is not that supernatural. It's weird, but it doesn't mean that it's not natural. And it's like every single human being probably is weird to himself, because you are first a spirit in a body, and the most essential thing in your life is your spirit, isn't it? Part of life force. But if you start considering that you are first a spirit, then you say, I'm getting crazy. No, you are probably renaturalized. You lost the natural sense of perceiving yourself as a spirit. And it, unfortunately, people only record the sense of a spirit when they're going to die. I'm going to die in a dying bed. And then you rediscover something that you lost for the rest of the beginning of your life, or the entire life, you lost the sense of being a spirit. And then that is there to remind you, to prove you that you are the spirit, because something is living, what is it? Something is getting out. Something came into the body to run the body, to run the life of the human, and something get out. Therefore, you are a spirit. And so when you lost sense of spirit, you will lose sense of consciousness. When you lose sense of consciousness, you lose sense of functioning and sense of purpose. It's so simple. That's the wisdom. And that's why the, the human being is disintegrated. Now, when the spirit is not functioning with the body harmoniously with a, with a sense of purpose, then that's what people is wounded, is fragmented, is fractured is afflicted, tormented, because all of a sudden the spirit doesn't have a chance. And that's why people is unconscious. 
because it is not a spiritual presence. And they call it spirituality, all kind of practices and all kind of things. Yeah, those, those things are good and nice. I practice many spiritual things for most of my life. But the first spiritual practice is that you recognize that you're a spirit directly. And if you lost that, that's why people are unconscious. Where there is no spirit, there is no consciousness. How do we recognize that we are a spirit? It's so natural. It's at hand. Like you recognize that flower. And then you see the flower right there, you see, and then you smell it. The essence of that rose is the spirit. Body and essence, flower and essence, that's exactly the same thing that the human is. It's body and it's essence. The flower is the body, the essence is the spirit. They are always together. We lost that consciousness. I say we to support you. Healing that will heal the dysfunctional systems that are, um, that we are, uh, dis how we are dysfunctional with nature right now. And then what would it look like then for us to be at our full purpose? Because it seems as though we have, uh, with this great dysfunction, uh, many of us have a lack of, of daily purpose, daily meaning, doing something that we find very meaningful every day. So when we are fully embodied with spirit, then we're surrendered and we get to achieve our, our track of our divine purpose. Part of deception in the human reality, which is very actually uh, discouraging and also the cause of misery, is that the purpose of a life of a human being is not what the spirit has agreed upon, but it's the purpose that the, the artificial system has it, uh, imposed upon him in the mind, and in, in, in his psychic, and whatever it is, not in the spirit. So the purpose of a life of a human being is agreed upon in the spirit by the means of intelligent power throughout a very, very clear uh, conscious agreement with the power that has created us and delivered into being as a spirit. We have a clear, pure purpose in the spirit that is completely forgotten. And it is not the same for every single human being. Once again, here is the body. The liver has a purpose to do 380 functions in an astonishing way, probably more, for the benefit of the body, and it's doing its own thing still. Like people, I want to do my own thing. But even if it's your own thing, your purpose, it should be for the benefit of the whole, for the benefit of the collective, as the body indicates. The heart that does its own thing on its own, but with the purpose and the benefit of the whole. Everybody can do his own thing, as long as, as far as, is for the benefit of the collective. And the reason because this went wrong is because that's the, the notion of consciousness in the spirit, and that's the agreement to function for the benefit of the whole. There is no selfish. But it went wrong because the system of deception has imposed a purpose to the human being, it is also artificial art. The system is. It doesn't benefit the collective. It benefits the system, but not the collective. Simple. It's a beautiful way of looking at it, all of the different cells in the body, like humans on the planet, how they all work cohesively in the body for the functioning. And if with a, on a civilizational level, if they can also work cohesively with their individual purposes, then in balance with nature, then that's, that can be a beautiful, beautiful. Look, nature. you're living the original living wisdom of humanity, the original living wisdom of the human race, the original pure wisdom of nature, you are every single instant, as long as you're in a body as a spirit, you are living in on it. 
The wisdom which is keep the body alive is no different than the wisdom that runs in nature and runs the entire system of nature. You are there on it. It's the most extraordinary proof, the functioning and the life of the body. There you go. And then you're asking, what is the wisdom? It's not in the books. It's not in the, you know, data on the collection of amazing information. The wisdom of this planet, of this dimension, which is the reflection of a celestial original wisdom of the spirit, is right there in your body. And the spirit is coming to work with it as it's coming to work with nature. And people is completely unconscious. When they have health issues and real serious diseases and challenges, now they see that the body doesn't function and then probably the spirit gets completely disintegrated. Now they have a problem. And that's probably the only time that they pay attention. You know? Couple um, other thoughts on the way out. I wanna I want to hear your thoughts on this. So when we when we tap into um, the cohesion of 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 being connected to nature on a moment to moment basis, we feel expansive. We feel beyond. We feel all that is. We feel mother. We feel the source, the spirit. And if we can hold that on a moment to moment basis, we you said that that was grace yesterday. You said that was grace. And if you can connect with grace on a moment to moment basis then that can be one of the best ways to live consciously and function consciously. The first spiritual state of grace is that you, a spirit, is part of that perfection. We are part of the mother power, or part of, the, or part of God in the spirit. We are part of that. We were born and created as a part of God. And that's the first level of grace. If you're conscious that you're part of the power of grace, so then your consciousness will be recovered. Some of the many spiritual practices of this world, especially in the younger brother, they supposedly are pointing out to it. But yet, people doesn't change their own behavior. When they discover and they have this direct, very simple, natural experience that you are the spirit, part of the great, great, great power, then your behavior will be completely changed. And that's exactly the original wisdom. Since probably people have gone so far away from the power, and we do not follow the most important law of functioning, which is reciprocity, Reciprocity means to correspond one and another in a loving association. You call love, it's reciprocity. If we don't reciprocate with the power that has created us, we call the mother power, we have to correspond with the mother power. The first level, the way we correspond to the mother power is fulfilling the agreement that we came here to fulfill and obeying the natural law functioning created by it. We did not create the laws. We did not create the principles of functioning. They were created with the creation itself. If we lost how to correspond with the power naturally, functionally, where well, we will malfunction with everything. We don't correspond with anything. We take, we take, we take, we take, and we don't care. Therefore, the natural law, the original law of reciprocity is the power that holds harmony, integrity, and balance. If you don't reciprocate with everything, then, then things will collapse. True. It's like you have in a relationship with somebody. You give and give and give love. Or you take and you take and you take and you take the so-called love in a relationship. If you don't give back, what kind of relationship is that? Mm. The real relationship between humans, between nature, between power, the power of creation that we call the mother power, 
is based in reciprocity. You, you take, you give back in every possible way. Is that what we do? We have a disposable planet mentality. Yeah, we use and abuse and then we dispose. It's extraordinarily unconscious and irresponsible. And there's big delinquencies, you use this word, um, that we have to pay our taxes that we're delinquent on. The taxes as in the connection to, to nature that we've been disconnected from, fragmented from. Well, the, the taxi thing in, in is translated into the younger brother terminology to make that not that weird, <laughs> more connected with the, the dysfunctional system to follow, which is the monetary system, the financial system, the money system. It's like, yeah, pay the taxes to the ones who, you know, are the organized system of finances and supposedly the the system that runs the budget for everything, to maintain everything, but it's to maintain a system, it's not to maintain nature. So the system of, of monetary, financial stuff, it will be great if a part of the budget is invest the, to repair nature and to maintain uh, nature. So in other words, pay the taxes to nature, the same, pay, the same way you pay taxes for everything. It's great that you pay taxes because it's part of uh, you know, the collaboration and uh, is, 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 a, is a great part for maintenance system that is necessary for humans, absolutely. But part of that budget should be uh, dedicated to repair and maintain nature because most of the profits and most of, most of the business and most of the money is made out of using and abusing nature and destroying nature and exterminating nature. So why no part of those things should be invested in repairing nature? It's very intelligent, actually. It doesn't go against anybody. Probably it's inconvenient, but just for a while. If the people are, uh, get used to pay taxes for everything, or taxes, well, that's amazing, it's good, because it maintains a system. But it's not maintaining the system, they maintain that system that depends out of it, and that system that explodes, the system that really sustains us. Pay the taxes to nature, the same way you pay the taxes for everything, and then we will be in balance. Or at least we'll stop the crazy destruction that we are creating. If we pay taxes to nature in many various ways, first is maintain, maintenance. Look at this, if you have a little machine, the lawn machine, to cut the lawn and keep it beautiful, it needs maintenance. It needs to pay the handyman, the operator and everything else, you know? So what's the kind of money that we invest in maintenance nature if we were taking everything from nature? What's the kind of work, what's the kind of uh, investment that we do in workers and labor and humans that are completely dedicated. It should be a department in this country and in many others, the Department of Nature Maintenance. Mm -hmm. And billions should be invested in it and cool. Yes. Continue with your business, but you also are investing in maintaining and repairing nature. The same thing that you do with your refrigerators, with your computers, with your sophisticated cars and planes and quantum computers, do it with nature and then things will be better. I wrote this down in the notes during the workshop that it would be interesting if 10% of every single uh, venture capital fund over $10 million had to go, 10% uh, of it had to go towards this maintenance of nature uh, budget around the world. I think that would be very helpful, things like that. Also, when you say pay your taxes, you're making it clear you're not going to the ocean uh, unconsciously taking a selfie and then leaving. This is a go there. Go it's not a selfie, it's a selfish. You go to nature, put your uh, attractive face, take the picture, probably before committing suicide, you know, because that hasn't been the case in a beautiful setting in nature, and you go. That's what's so wrong with us. That's the title of my next coming book called What's Wrong With Us? Yeah. 
This is a level of insanity. What's wrong with us? I mean, could you bother to just give a little respect to the grandmother and yes. say, Grandma, how are you doing? I love you. Okay. It's ridiculous to be there, or we can only have sex there in all kind of ways and get naked and get beaten by chars or something like that, us, and then they're selfish before committing suicide. What's wrong with us? Nature is there to be honored, to be respect, not to be only used and abused. And in a society like this, one of the most powerful and yet cynical and pathetic and pitiful world is word in language and is used in abuse more than any is abuse. That word is exploded in so, 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 so many ways with animals, in relationships, with, with everything. Verbal abuse, psychological abuse, sexual abuse, all kind of abuses, which is at levels on that might be true. But what about the abuse to nature? Nobody says anything about the abuse to nature. Abuse to the system, to the grandmother, mother earth that sustains us all. What about the abuse, the collective global abuse, the bigger, biggest abuse of all? But you don't say anything about it. We do. We are abusing nature. Mm -hmm. We are exterminating nature, the system that sustain us because of the lack of consciousness, the lack of responsible behavior, and because we have lost sense of the spirit, sense of being, and sense of functioning. And the last thing I think I would love for you to touch on quickly is um, <clears throat> on a big uh, picture level of what's uh, happening on the planet. It, is um, in many ways uh, seems at times that there are forces that are at play on this beautiful planet um, that are beyond what is here in the physical world. And so what is, it, and sometimes it literally feels like light forces versus dark forces that are at play on the planet. And where do they come from? How are they, do the dark forces come within that spiritual fragmentation when we're fragmented, disconnected from nature? That's where evil comes in. Teach us about that. The, the spiritual fragmentation, the first level is the loss of sense of spirit. And then, let's say, shocking, irreparable experiences that because of not knowing and not holding ourselves as a spirit, just, just as a, a characters and personalities, no sense of spirit whatsoever. So that in itself creates a serious, serious fragmentation in the spirit. The spirit is uh, inhabilitated to come and, and, and perform its real, real function. So that fragmentation causes the others, you know. The other is that because we don't operate as a spirit consciously, then we will start creating uh, sub levels of energy, sub levels of, of, of uh, quality in, in our own uh, development, which is lowest levels of energy and density, which is coming from mentalizing and mentalizing. The, the, the lowest kind of energy is created by humans is mentalizing psyching things out like crazy, abusing, mentalizing, and abusing, psyching out, you know, especially with experts that mentalize, overanalyze. They cannot be natural anymore, have some sense of proportion and common sense that is the most common sense from nature. We are the spirits. Life force is a spirit. And so when we had lost sense of spirit, sense of being, and sense of function with nature, you know, so then everything gets crazy, and we create a dense operating way that probably attracts the same from other planes, from other spaces, from other dimensions. And then as that is degrading and degrading even more, probably attacks, uh, attracts and magnetizes Something that you can call dark forces at place. Forces of evil, forces of dark power. Yeah, but we're calling for it. 
We are the ones responsible for that. Let evil be there in its own function. God put evil there to do its own function. And while we do, we wouldn't do ours, that it should be intelligent and divine. You know, evil is there for the purpose, who knows? The Bible says, and some of the accounts of the Bible, and your wisdom, the wisdom of the, of the, of the, most of the Christian world and some others, they say that God creates evil for the purpose. Probably is to prove us if we are faithful and conscious. Yes. You know, if we are integrated and function, intelligent, intelligence is part of the presence of spirit. But if we are stupid, probably we are attracting that he will take control of us and sabotage us and manipulate us into a wrong way. It's totally up to us. We are the ones who bring the problem. We are the ones who can solve the problem. With wisdom, with, with consciousness, and with responsibility. We will solve the problem. Even to, in, in, at the times that we're living, in critical times, and the times that are completely crazy, despair and confusion. We can come to senses, we can come to terms. Everybody with his own capabilities and gifts and wisdom and stop the problem. If we cannot repair fully, at least we can correct and bring a better, let's call it future for the new generations. This is exactly what the ancient wisdom of my ancestors is necessary in this world of the younger brother. The younger brother has to stop being naughty and being spoiled and come to visit the grandmother and receive some counseling, not only with the psychology, but with the grandmother wisdom. Wow. This has been definitely one of my favorite sit downs that I've ever had on the show. Thank you so much. For Appreciate it, sir. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you for having Thank me. You. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We are very, very grateful for you. Thank and you. one moment, I'll close the show quickly. Um, I just want to say, everyone, uh, please, please, please do check out the links in the bio below to the Koginka Sewa Luna Foundation.org as well as their Facebook page the um, amount of times that you're traveling around the United States. There's um, an Asheville in Florida, in the California, in Colombia. So please, there are, there are plenty of opportunities to come and partake in this ancient wisdom, and we highly, highly recommend you do so. There's also other videos as well of Mama giving talks online, so please do check those out. And share this type of ancient wisdom with your friends, your families, coworkers, people online. Share this and go and pay the tax to the ancient mother, to our grandmother, to source, to spirit, to what sustains us. Thank you very much for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. And we will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much.